So I'm starting the first project with this frame here. I really love this, it's shabby chic. And this material here, which I got with some flowers, I'm not too sure what it is, but we're going to have to double it over. There's Leo making his appearance as usual. We're going to have to double it over because it's quite thin and I don't want this wood being seen. You can paint this. I just really wanted some material down there. So I'm going to cut this to size and we're going to glue it on to the wood. I'm just going to start by sticking this together first, adding a little hot glue. Now I'm going to add glue on the back here. I was running out of glue sticks. You can use PVA, you don't need to use hot glue. Just use it because it's really fast. So place that down like this and then I'm going to cut around it. Now I'm just going to place the backing inside the frame. Now I'm going to be using a few things here. We're going to make this look really nice and arty. I'm taking some of these embossed metal frames, which I've had for a really long time, but I've just never found a use for them. I am grateful that I hung on to these. And I'm going to take, let's see, this one here. Okay, so I've actually gone with two smaller ones. I found that one to be a little bit too big for the frame that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and stick these down. They do have these foam pads, but I'm not finding that the stick on there is very good. So I'm just going to go in with the hot glue, make sure it's nice and secure. And then again with this one here. Now taking some masks, which I always mention if you are new here, I collect this myself just from around the garden or the park, the woodlandy areas. We're going to add some moss onto here and you can see it's already really transforming it. It's bringing pop of colour and life to the piece. By the way, that's red there because I've been bitten. <laughs> by something and it's swollen up a little bit so I'm just keeping an eye on it. I was thinking of wearing gloves but I thought that would look just really strange. And you can use this piece for autumn and you can use it for Halloween. I think we'll take some of this. This is just something, some dried plants I collected again on one of my hikes. I love to just bring a bag back home so it can use in my crafts like I am right now. And then these are dried flowers that I buy in tubs. I've shown you this a few times but because sometimes we get new subscribers come along. I just order these from Amazon. You can type in dried flowers. And I'm going to go with these colours here because they're a little bit spooky, a little bit eerie and it just adds to the piece. So having a look what else I've got here. I do have some black ones but I think we've got enough black there so I won't go with that. Okay we're going to go with this right here and just add my hot glue to that to stick it down. And then I'm bringing a little bit of the blue flower at the bottom just to coordinate and bring that back into the project adding a little colour again to the bottom. And I'm going to be using these gorgeous butterflies. I've shown you this in one of my recent projects. I really cannot get enough of these. This is a butterfly and moth collection. Just look at the packaging itself. This is from Let's Resin. There is going to be a link in my description box if you want to check them out. But they come like this. You've got a few different sizes that you can choose from. You've got small miniature ones, which are the typical size I go for. And then you have medium and then some really large ones. And they are double sided as well. So this is how they look. Look at the gorgeous detailing. Double sided, shimmery, really thick, really nice. And look at how gorgeous that is. As soon as you add it on there, it's just the missing touch. So I'm going with the medium sizes, I think, today. 
have a look at that isn't that gorgeous and you can add it however you like you can stick it like this I'm sticking this one at an angle and I'm just going to add my hot glue but really that's the end of the project here's a final look at the finished project this is definitely one of my personal favorites and as I mentioned you can have this out for fall for Halloween or even all year round it's quite arty and I really love that about it for the next project nice and simple start off with a mason jar Going to place some raffia inside. Then I'm going to be taking these mushrooms. I've got three, but I'm going to be using two. So I'm taking this one, which is a different colour. I want to add a little bit of detail to it, so I'm going to create some spots using my acrylic paint and my dotting tool. And the dotting tool has a little ball on the end, like this. So my mushrooms are dry and I've placed them both inside. I did want one bigger one but I just didn't have one that fits the jar that I've got so two fitted in there nicely. I've also taken this image, I wanted to create like a label to go on the side and decorate the side of the jar. To do that I have taken some of these, well I've actually just used one but this is from the die cut book that I have. It's actually supposed to be for Christmas but you do get pine cones in autumn so we're going to use that. Let's place the lid back on the jar because I want to decorate the neck and I want to really make this look rustic and I'm just going to wrap this around the neck of the jar and then go ahead and stick the paper label. I'm just securing this right here with a drop of hot glue and I'm going to stick it on the back and then I've gone and created a little bow and added this circle so we can hang that on like that and this is how I'm going to be sticking the paper just on to the ribbon like that so it dangles down nicely on the side so let's take the hot glue to attach the two together just a drop like that this one was nice and simple but you know I always tell you sometimes it's the simple things. I really do love how this one came out. I think it's so cottage core and rustic and those two are some of my favourite styles in decorating. For the third DIY I have taken this wreath. I've also added moss just with my hot glue around the wreath and I've gone onto the internet, I looked for some images for foxes and I have a few as you can see but I'm going to be going with this one because all of the other DIYs are quite cottage core and I felt like this one really fitted in and as you can see it looks just so nice in the wreath so what I'm going to do is because this is on paper we're just going to strengthen it you're going to add some card at the back of this you can stick this down with PVA if you like. I'm going to be taking just some double sided tape. So I'm just going to add that a few strips on the card. And that should be good to go. I don't actually need it all the way down because it's sort of the middle. I think cottage core is one of my favourite styles and although I'm saying that I haven't really done that many cottage core crafts so definitely need to do a little bit more. Let me know what you think of cottage core as a style. So I'm going to remove the backing which is sometimes tricky. <laughs> Yeah, that's just removing the whole thing. So I'll do this off camera because it'll take me a while. There we go. That's one. And here's a fox illustration. If you'd like to find this, I typed in natural fox illustration and this came up in the images on Google. So just placing the paper down gently. And there we have it. We can place our wreath on top, have a look at where you'd like it. And this is where mine's going to go, let's see. 
think that looks a little bit better. So I'm just going to draw along that or around it so I know kind of how much to cut. It is going to be bigger. This is just a rough estimate. So I'm going to grab my scissors and cut this circle out. I'm going to just let my hot glue gun get a little bit warm while I do that. I'm going to take a little white acrylic paint. I'm going to dab it on some of the moss here just to make it look a little rustic. Just slightly, not too much. That's why I like to use a sponge brush because it really does get rid of the excess and you have more control over it. I'm in two minds whether to add this toadstool. I don't know, sometimes they look a little bit too shiny for my liking. So I've gone and snipped it just to make it a little shorter. I think that that actually looks okay. Yeah, it does, do, it does add something to it so I'm going to go and stick that down. Sometimes I do like to just kind of take the brightness off as I mentioned, I'm not too fond on that. Yeah, sometimes I like to take an Arteza pen and just go over the red because red's a little bit too shiny. So I've just done the same again with this green mushroom and it really helps. And now again with my hot glue, I'm going to go around the paper so we can stick this on to the wreath. And then I'm taking this dried plant again and we're going to stick that right there, almost finishing up. I have this embellishment, this wooden embellishment and you can of course colour them in. So I'm just going to stick that down and then I think we're done with this. I've had to make an adjustment. I wasn't happy with these. I felt like everything has been looking really natural and these didn't even though I did kind of, you know, take off some of that brightness in the colour. I just went with these. I was so happy because I didn't know that I had these toadstools, these mushroom wooden embellishments. So I've gone with that. I've placed the leaf there. I've left this dried um, leaf thing, whatever it is, plant <laughs> there. And now I'm going to add a little bit of fern. So I've got some dried fern here which I didn't actually manage to press so this is why it looks all funky. So I've taken a piece off and I'm going to look at where to decorate it but I think that looks amazing. Then I've also got some heather. Heather's really good because it already looks like it's dried out. So I'm going to have a look at where I would like to stick all of these. I just really wanted it to look more cottage core. I think this is going to do the trick. Look at this, isn't that much better? That's so much better now. A little bit too plain before. I actually like that this is all twisted. It looks good. Oh, this wreath reminds me of Animals of Farthing Woods. I really like it. I actually am finding it quite hard to choose today what my favourite project is. All I know is that these three I have genuinely had so much fun making and I really do love them all. I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm finding it hard. Guys, you have to let me know what one is your favourite. Can you choose? Is it easy for you or is it as hard as it is for me? I do hope that you have enjoyed watching. Until the next one, take care.